This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to go through and look at derivatives. Now, a derivative is a new financial instrument that you've not previously seen. So you haven't met it through F7. It's something entirely new at P2. And it's like a bit of an introduction or guide you into the world of hedging, which, which we see in, in subsequent videos. But let's not worry about hedging, first of all. Before we get into the world of hedging, we need to know what a derivative actually is. Okay, uh, And a derivative it is a special type of financial instrument that can actually be either a financial asset or a financial liability. It all depends upon the underlying item. Okay, uh, We'll talk about the underlying item in a minute, but... That underlying item can give rise to either gains or losses. Now, now if we have a gain, that's a favourable financial instrument, so a, a derivative that is a financial asset. If it is a financial instrument that gives rise to unfavourable conditions, if you like, we're making losses on the instrument, then that is a, a financial liability derivative. So you need to be careful, not only that you understand what a derivative is, but that it can give rise to gains and losses and therefore it can be a financial asset or financial liability within the financial statements. So how do we first of all identify a derivative? Well, in order for a derivative to, to be classified as a, a derivative, it needs to have three characteristics. Uh, the first one that is, if you like, that the value of that item. Uh, so its fair value will change based upon the value of an underlying item. Okay, So an underlying item can be anything such as interest rates, uh, commodity prices, uh, exchange rates, because as the exchange rates fluctuate, as the commodity prices go up and down, uh, you may pay more, you may pay less for the goods that you are contracted to buy under this financial instrument. So if you have a, a forward contract, to buy, say, oranges, uh, or if you have a futures contract to buy oranges, that futures or that forward contract will go up and down in value depending upon what happens, if you like, to the value of oranges on the open market. So if you are able to buy 100 oranges at $100 under your futures contract, and let's just say that the price on the open market of oranges goes up to $110, then you've got a contract that says you can buy those 100 oranges at $100 on the open market uh, that they would cost you 110 so so with your futures contract uh, you are able to buy them cheaper than on the open market so that's a favorable contract so therefore give rise to a gain okay and, and a financial asset but hopefully you can see there that my future allows me to buy the oranges at $100. Uh, and if the value of the open market goes up, uh, it gives more value to the contract. If the value of the oranges goes down to, say, $95, uh, uh, this contract's worthless, isn't it? And it's given me a bit of a headache. It's given me a loss on buying the, the, those oranges because I have to pay 100 when on the open market I can get them for 95 So the key bit is that the value of this, okay, the value of this contract, uh, is going to fluctuate based upon what happens on the open market. I know it's determined, it's fixed at that amount there, but the fair value of it, the worth of it to somebody else it is going to change, isn't it? And that changes based upon the, the, the price there that we said of the commodity. Uh, it could also be with due regard to interest or foreign exchange rates. Okay. Uh, the other important aspect of a derivative is that it requires no initial net investment or a very small investment now i could go to the futures market and i could get myself a futures contract on oranges if i so wished for a very minimum amount at all okay i just need to sign up into the contract i pay a small fee uh, at the start but in terms of the overall value of my futures contract that would be regarded as, as negligible okay so there's either no fee or a very small fee at the start okay uh, and then the other situation in order for it to be a derivative is that it has to be settled at some point in the future. So when I spoke about my futures contract, I can enter into the futures contract today to buy a fixed quantity of oranges at some point in the future. So it will be settled at some point in the future. It costs me nothing today and the value of that future will change based upon the open market value of oranges 
which is, if you like, the, the underlying variable is the, the price of an orange. OK, there we go. If you're wondering why it's all about orange futures, go and watch the film Trading Places with Eddie Murphy. But other than that, we'll leave that to one side. Let's focus on the derivatives. OK, uh, the, the one of Eddie Murphy's better films. OK, uh, so it has to follow those three criteria. The value has to change in response to the underlying item. Uh, it has to be settled at some point in the future and it requires no or a very small initial net investment. OK, if that's the case, then it is a derivative. How do we then go through and look at the accounting for it? Well, again, everything is all based upon fair value. So you measure it at fair value initially. Normally it's zero because you pay nothing. But if you do make a payment, there will be some small value to it. OK, credit bank debit the derivative. OK, uh, and then what you have, you measure it subsequently. So as the value of the underlying item changes, the value of your derivative changes. It will either be favorable if it's a gain. It will either be unfavorable if it is a loss. Uh, and then gains and losses. Are recognized immediately through profit or loss, because this derivative you have effectively is speculative. It's all there for trading purposes. So therefore, gains and losses are recognised in profit or loss. None of this storing it up in, in other comprehensive income, uh, ready to be recycled at some point in the future. Well, what a nonsense that is. OK, uh, gains and losses on the derivative immediately go to profit or loss when it's measured at fair value. Again, uh, think about what we said way back at the start, didn't we, about the, the financial accounting standards being developed on a position focus, you know, here again. You know, if we get the fair value right, then the gain or loss will be correct because we look at the opening fair value and the closing fair value. So we now have a standard on fair value, which we'll talk about later on how to measure this fair value. So if we know the fair value, then everything in profit or loss is, is also correct as well. So it's very much a positional focus. OK, uh, in terms of examples of derivatives, you've got them there. Uh, you can learn them or you can apply it uh, in terms of your knowledge within the exam. Uh, forward contract that you've seen in F9, an agreement to, to buy a fixed amount of foreign currency at some point in the future. Again, that is going to change as the foreign exchange rates change. As the, the, the rates on the open market change, it may mean that your forward contract is favourable or unfavourable. Again, there's no net investment required. You don't have to pay anything to enter into the forward contract. Uh, and it's settled at some point in future, isn't it, for, for cash? Uh, interest rate swaps, FRAs, we'll talk about interest rate swaps in a moment and, and FRAs, I'm not too worried about that's getting too much rule into the world of P4. OK, uh, but options, uh, options are, are special types of derivatives whereby if you see that you have a loss making future, if you have an option on that future, uh, then you are allowed to allow the future to lapse. You don't have to close it out. You don't make a loss on the future. There's no such thing as a loss making future if you have an option over it. OK, you can allow the option to lapse. However, you do need to pay a premium up front, uh, which, if you like, takes account of that small, you know, very small amount of your initial investment that, that, that still makes it a derivative. OK, uh, in terms of the illustration, uh, I think the illustration is based around a swap agreement. Again, I don't want to get too concerned with, with what a swap is. Uh, but let's have a look. Uh, it says here, Amy has taken out a $10 million five-year variable rate loan. So you've borrowed $10 million for five years on a variable rate of interest. So if interest rates go up, you're going to be paying more money, aren't you? So you're a little bit concerned. Okay, The risk is that interest rates go up, you pay more interest into the future. So what's happened there is that you have been advised to enter into an interest rate swap. OK, so you find a counterparty, somebody else essentially who has the opposite fear of you. OK, so we're fearful of rate rises. Maybe they're fearful of a rate fall. OK, so, you know, if they borrowed money, uh, they would quite happily want the interest rates to fall, wouldn't they? OK, uh, so what happens there is that we enter into an interest rate swap agreement. It's very simple. Yeah, there's me. I've borrowed 10 million. There's somebody else. They've also borrowed 10 million. OK, it does happen. There's trillions of dollars of these interest rate swaps in existence in the world. You would not believe it. Yeah, and you would be able to find somebody who's borrowed the same amount of money for you for the same period of time. OK, trust me, it does happen. 
And what happens there is because I'm worried about interest rates rising and paying more money, I approach the other party. And what we do is we agree to swap the interest payments. Okay, We, we still have our own borrowings, but we swap the interest payments. So, so I pay theirs and they pay mine. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I pay theirs is because their interest rate is fixed. Okay, that's the key bit. In order for swaps to work, I've borrowed variable, they've borrowed fixed. Okay, uh, so I pay their fixed, which is great because that limits my risk, and they pay my variable, and again that limits their risk because if they've borrowed at fixed and they want the rates to go down or think the rates will go down, they will prepare, prefer a variable rate of interest, wouldn't they? Okay. Uh, so what happens here within this particular swap arrangement? is that we pay a fixed rate of 3%. So even though we've borrowed variable, we're going to pay fixed at 3%. And we receive a variable rate of interest as LIBOR. Okay, the London Intrabank offered rate that stands for. Think of it as, as a market rate of interest. Uh, and that's what we receive. Okay, the other party pays our LIBOR, our, our variable rate of interest. Okay. Uh, the way in which that then works, it says Amy pays or receives a net cash amount uh, based on the difference between the 3%, which is fixed, and the, and the liable variable rate on the loan. Okay, So again, it's either going to be favourable or unfavourable, depending upon how LIBOR goes. You know, But if I'm paying fixed, and if LIBOR goes down below 3%, then I'm losing out, aren't I? Because I'm paying fixed, but I'm soon to pay that much lower LIBOR rate. So that would be unfavourable, wouldn't it? If LIBOR goes up and up and up, so it gets to 4, 5, 6%, I'm like, brilliant. I'm glad I've entered into this swap because I'm only going to pay the other parties fixed. Okay, they're, they're going to lose out because yeah, they're going to pay my variable, which is much higher than this fixed. Yeah, so that then gives me this interest rate swap as a favorable interest rate swap, and I'm making a gain. So the value of this swap goes up and down, doesn't it, depending upon the underlying rate of interest, whether that goes up or down, and that will then give me favorable or unfavorable swap uh we also settle it at some point in the future so settlement occurs is think is it at yearly intervals so every year we, we make the net interest payments uh and also again that there's no initial investment that there's nothing that i pay you know we just uh, approach a bank uh, an intermediary and the intermediary arranges the swap with, with with a counterparty okay i may have to pay again a small fee but a small fee uh, are based on the 10 million actual borrowings, you know, we're, 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 it's small fry, okay, we pay a very small percentage of that 10 million, so it settles the three criteria, okay, uh, the fact that there's no or very small initial net investment, it's settled at some point in the future, and thirdly, uh, the value of that swap is going to change over time, as this is my fixed rate that we've agreed under the swap, and as the variable rate goes up or down, means that my swap arrangement will either benefit me, or will not benefit me, i.e. it's therefore favourable or unfavourable. What then happens is that in order to then look at the value of that swap, we need to go through and work out its fair value. So if you like the amount of savings that I'm making on the interest or the extra interest that I'm actually paying, that will be the fair value of the swap. And then we look at that moving every single year and the movement goes through profit or loss, doesn't it? OK, that's it. The accounting treatment and the definition is very straightforward. However, being able to try and spot it within a question can be quite tricky. Uh, but once you've spotted that it's a derivative, you're away because you can talk about it being a derivative and you can talk about the fair value at each date and talk about the movement in fair value going through profit or loss. That's about as complicated as what it's going to get in terms of just a derivative. It shouldn't get any more difficult than that within the exam. If you practice some of the past exam questions, then, then you should be fine. OK, so make sure you spend a bit of time working through the questions, looking at the examples that you've got within the study text of your choice. And if you can do that, you shouldn't have any problems going forward with derivatives, no matter how complex they are within the real world. In the real world, oh, that's very straightforward. In the real world, things get much more complicated than interest rate swaps and futures on oranges. Other than that, I'll see you all within the next session.